Shaken, not stirred, using spice and jasmine. So has anybody used jasmine? Okay, cool. Has anybody used spice and jasmine? All right, so I guess I can just go home now, right? All right, so I'm Danielle. I'm a UI web developer at Arbor Networks. Sometimes I spy my JavaScript code. Occasionally I have a drink in my hand, and I use Jasmine Spice to spy my code. And this isn't going to work because it's not on. There we go. So what is a Jasmine Spy? So you may be wondering this, although everybody who's used them is not wondering this. Um, well, first of all, Jasmine is a testing framework for JavaScript. And a Jasmine Spy is basically Jasmine's version of a mock or test double function. It is generally used to mock a function or other JavaScript object. Um, you generally want to do this if you want to have more control over your testing and also if you want to track the uh, implementation of the function. Um, a couple of use cases that you might want to use Jasmine Spies for is to mock an API call or mock the API return data. Um, that way you can control the uh, return data instead of trying to rely on your API during the testing. Um, you can also mock methods from third-party libraries like jQuery. And you can actually uh, test like things like UI functionality like click handlers, which is kind of awesome. We started doing that at work recently. Um, so hey, you can mock API data. That sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Anybody? Yes? Yeah. All right. So it's one of the many things you can do with Jasmine Spies. So I'm going to walk through an example. So to start this, you would, um, so this is, I have this at the top of almost all of the spots where the Jasmine tests are. Um, you would set up your test file and start with your data like this. Um, and like I said, you have full control over this and you're not relying on your API for it. This is the actual code that you would be testing. And you notice right here, we don't have anything in the API data. So we're relying on that API data that's in the test function. Um, I did shortcut this a little bit, so it's not truly representative of how you would actually do this with an, with an API, because you probably want to have like your async function and all that, or you might want to use a promise or something like that. Um, so, but I tried to make it kind of short so it was easy to uh, understand it and I could fit it in the slides because hey, there's not a lot of room here. Um, yeah, hang on. That's a nifty little function on one of these guys that turns the screen blank if you want to. <laughs> so the next thing you want to do is you want to take that uh, API data call and you want to make sure that's in a before each block if you need it before each of your tests. So and you guys have probably, a lot of you have used Jasmine before so you know what before each does. It allows you to have this, inf like anything in the before each, for each test. Um, then you want to create your spy. So this is the magic of Jasmine spies. This is a spy on function right here. Um, and then spy. This, this does not have to be called spy. I just called it spy for the talk. It can be called whatever your object's called. Um, actually, I think, yeah, I'm using that same object right here and right here. So this is. This is the spy right here, and it's going back to this. That's the actual JavaScript file. Um, so you have your object, the spy object, and then you have the call API. That is the actual function we're testing, which would be that guy right there. So this is the code. This is what we're testing. Um, I'm not sure why they decided to do this like weird thing where they have like quotes around them. Function names, kind of weird. But that's how they do it. Um, one of the things I ran into while I was doing the test, because I have this all in a Git repo, so you guys can uh, check it out. Um, I was having a problem with my test failing because it wasn't actually going through the full implementation. So sometimes you want to go through the full implementation. We'd use and call through. So I needed to do that for this test. It actually delegates to the actual implementation. If you don't do this and you need that, your test will fail. Another thing I did that kind of just made it cleaner and helped me out was actually put the um, calls into return variables uh, so I could easily test them with my uh, matchers. And then we can create assertions with matchers. Uh, Jasmine Spies have special matchers. Um, like this one right here has two have been called. 
And that just checks to see if it's been called at least one time. Oh, and that is also something you, I've gotten into the habit of always doing this before I do any of my other tests because this makes sure that it's been called. And if this fails, everything else is going to fail, if that makes sense. I'm at five minutes. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, right. So, I get, totally got thrown off. Okay, so now that we've created the mock data, created our function to spy on, we've spied on the Jazz, uh, we've spied on it with the Jazz and Spy, we can finally test our mock API function. We can treat this function as we would treat any other function in our test suite and create assertions for it. So I kind of stepped through this process and this is a review. So we set up our mock data, we set up our original function, we placed our mock data into a before each block so it would be accessible to all the tests, we created our spy. We used and call through to make sure that we could go through our actual implementation. We put our spy down returns and variables and we created assertions with matchers and then we tested our API data. And I have this all at GitHub and I can post this link in the meetup uh, so you guys can look at it. It's got uh, two files and you can just download it, have Jasmine ready and just type Jasmine and it'll run, run the tests. Um, more information. This was all Jasmine 2.0 and you can go to the Jasmine documentation. Um, there were some syntax changes with uh, spice. So thanks and cheers.